Wow, it's truly been a minute, right? Welcome back to my first podcast episode in almost three years. My very last episode was titled uh, MFN Recap, (laughs) in which I shared with you all on December 29th, 2021. So this upcoming December would have been three years, but I'm so grateful to be diving back into it a little before that because two is my favorite number, but also so much has happened so much so to the point where I don't think that therapy would be something that will allow me to thoroughly channel all of the sacred rage that I feel, all of the joy that I feel, all of the gratitude that I feel, all of the many experiences that I've experienced since then, and especially since becoming a mother. I have been taken on quite the journey. I have been experiencing such an awakening, a reawakening, such a death, such a rites of passage. And this is not really something that I feel like I could ever really put into words. This is just one of those many things, much like my trip to Kemet and all of my other travels where you just really had to be there. You really just have to be here to be present, to really experience it to such a magnitude and such a degree. And I pray that in my efforts to fully communicate the things that I've experienced, that you all hear me, you all will see me, and you all will really take from it, you know, what applies to you something that you may feel like you resonate with may not be in its entirety may not be exactly it it might not be definitive it may not be this linear thing but I thoroughly trust that in me coming back (laughs) it will be like 10 times better than where I was before I took a moment to really like scroll through all of my podcast episodes and a part of me kind of like cringed for one everything is capitalized so I must have felt some type of way (laughs) but also I was a little um emotionally unintelligent and for me that's not really like me you know so but I also gave gratitude because of that It really showed that in the moments where I was really hurt by something, I hopped on a podcast and let that real and raw emotion be channeled to something great, channeled through something beautiful. And I really loved that about myself. So I kind of had to take a step back to say like it wasn't so emotionally unintelligent. Uh, You really did show up as mama alchemist you weren't a mama back then but you were an alchemist you know like you really transmuted the shit into something great and so that's what I really want to continue to hone in on in this new season of my life in this new season of my podcast episodes and I will give the disclaimer like I still don't really want to edit anything y'all will hear me being a mother And I just want to keep it real and raw. I feel like that's the very thing that has brought me back to podcasting is, you know, where I am presently and feeling like my real and raw essence isn't truly accepted or respected by a lot of people. And when I am not in my real and raw essence, I am often passive. I am often feeling flaw, fake as fuck. And also trying to like save face and inevitably like hiding who I am because I fear that other people will not will not accept me. And so I've kind of like done this dance for a long time in my life. I'm currently working on a huge project in which I pray that will be finished by 2025 sometime. But who knows? Not rushing it. But I came across some writings where 
I basically said it multiple times. Like I'm always dimming my light, always dimming my light. And so as I went through my podcast episodes, I did see where aside from the healing the bitch episode where I shared an episode about seeing myself, I think that was like the beginning of me truly like seeing myself and working towards accepting myself, though I don't feel like I was there yet. And so since then, I've had all of these many reflections through other people uh, in terms of like why I may not accept myself, why they may not accept me, why I may not accept them. So I've just really been coming into a space amongst other (laughs) messages and reflections uh, primarily built upon seeing myself. And so I feel like once again, that has been the fuel to come back to podcasting because again, you know, people don't accept real and raw, not always. And for the ones who claim they do, for the ones who claim they are authentic, it truly shows whether they do or not when they are back against the wall face to face with somebody who's given them that real and raw it's like if you can be authentic if you can be real why is it hard for you to see that in somebody else when they are doing the same thing oh wait because you're really not who you say you are you know and so in all the ways that I've been challenged I always accept the fucking challenge Because I prefer my relationships to be real and fucking raw. I'm talking about blood raw. And I really muster that up out of people. It's very uncomfortable for them. I think my spouse can probably speak for that or speak to that. I really try to like pull that out of them. I really like doing dances with people's shadows, including my own. And I really prefer my relationships to be built upon that. But I get that a lot of people don't like doing that dance because it's very uncomfortable. But again, if I am saying that I'm real and raw, I absolutely respect when other people are too. And honestly, I respect when a person can call me out of my bullshit. Not a lot of people can do that. Not a lot of people want to do that to me, but I thoroughly accept the fucking challenge. I might not always see it in a moment but my spouse is is a witness like I always come back and say you were right like I apologize I'm not afraid of apologizing I'm not afraid of being wrong I thoroughly respect the people who can straight up say like no satin (laughs) you know and I might banter with you back and forth because I'm processing the thing But to bring it home to the reason for me podcasting to begin with is because I really didn't feel like therapy was something that would help me. I was born on Wednesday, as most of you all may know, which is ruled by Mercury, the planet of communication. In me moving back home to Florida a few months ago, which we are not in Florida at this moment, we've since moved again. I was at my mother's house just like going through some old things because she was moving and so it was a beautiful time to just sit and reflect. I got a lot of my childhood memories from her and one thing that I came across, well two things that I came across was a short story that I created (laughs) about a dog in a house and I think I was like in second or third grade and then I also came across a note. She showed me that I wrote her a note expressing to her like why I apologize for like slamming a door in her face or something (laughs) and so it really helped me to see myself not just to through those two things but through the the photos like my childhood photos it helped me to see like damn I really always been this person like I've always dressed nice I always love my jewelry I always love my hair being done I was always this petite little girl you know And I think a lot of people still see me as that little girl, but now I'm like, I'm an adult, you know, I'm a 30 year old mother. Like you have to see me, you have to see me. And um, not to dive into that just yet, but seeing those photos and all of that stuff, it helped me to see like, damn, I'm really an artist. I think we limit artistry to just one 
facet of paint art, drawing art, that type of art. But writing is such a well overlooked art, art form, you know, and it really goes hand in hand with communication. And while I might not have always communicated the best or (laughs) the irony, communicated the best or even, you know, wrote the best. It was the best for who and where I was at a given time, but it's always been profound at whatever level I've been at. And um, I'm starting to see myself as an artist, as a creative person, as a, a creator and not creative because I am a creative person, but identifying with who God is you know I'm not God but if I come from this divine source I and this person is a in this being this divinity is a creator I must be a creator as well I created a whole being so to really be able to see myself in such a magnitude has been helpful to see myself as like um a person who's always been this person like to see myself as Satin, you've always been this person, you know, it has been really helpful for my retrieval for my homecoming, because while I've been journeying out in the world, there were people around me trying to make me feel like who I am and who I was at that given time is no bueno, not a good person. You're this, you're that X, Y, Z, instead of just respecting who I was at that time and Though at my core essence, I might have been a person I've always been, but deep down people evolve, people grow, people change. And so instead of accepting that, they've written me off and inevitably made me feel less than. And so in my homecoming and my my retrieval and coming back to this space that has always felt good, which was communicating, you know, it feels good to be back doing this damn thing I've I've experienced a bit of panic and anxiety about what my life will look like as a mother especially trying to get back to the things that I enjoy such as podcasting such as doing YouTube with the infant or a toddler like running around and I'm like yo I can't do this I literally can't do it but I realized that I gave birth to him unmedicated It might have not been in a space that I wanted to give birth, but I did the motherfucking thing. I probably labored longer at home than I did in the space that I didn't want to give birth at. But even when I arrived in that space, I advocated for me. I only did it. I only birthed for six hours. I took my placenta home. I did the fucking unthinkable. I did the things that women who came before me did not do probably were not able to do so when I think about that I feel like I can do anything you know and so uh I'm doing the motherfucking thing I'm podcasting I am doing so much more and I'm ultimately being impeccable with my word you know that's my goal I realize like a lot of the things that I quote unquote failed at was just a reflection of me not being consistent, not being impeccable with my word and ultimately not moving on spirits or I'm sorry, God's timing or the divine's time, but more so just creating based on how other people feel and perceive me and what I'm doing. And that is not sustainable at all. So coming back to this space once more is an ode to myself because I owe it to myself to just do what I love, do the thing that God is guiding me towards and just worry about all of the other things later. Like I can be stressing about or worried about, oh, where's the intro to my podcast? I'm not PSA with Sasha anymore I'm not this I'm not that like I I gotta wait until I get all of these graphic designers and things in order before I do this but that's imposter syndrome that's also self-sabotage if you never do the thing 
you never do the thing. And if you don't do the thing while you have the spark to do the thing, you inevitably lose the spark. So you can't be mad when somebody else picks up the spark and lights the flame, the thing that you were supposed to do, you know? So I'm here and I'm super grateful to be back. I won't say that all episodes will be as serene as this one because you just never know with these kids, honey. I have one one child, but I say kids to speak to everybody with kids. You just never know. Okay, so <laughs> I'm really, 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 really grateful for everybody near and far who has just always supported me and seen me even when I couldn't see myself. I'm grateful for the people who have seen me and stuck by. I'm grateful for the people who have seen me and given me opportunities just off the strength of seeing me because they knew that I was going to take the baton and run with it, you know? I pray that I always give as much as I receive. I ask for forgiveness for anybody who I've ever wronged and I just pray that I continuously forgive those who have wronged me who who didn't see me and maybe because I couldn't see myself but I also forgive those who saw me and never gave me the opportunity because sometimes it really sucks to see somebody who you know is the 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 one and the two and because you might not feel like the one and the two about yourself you will never give that person the chance you will never give them opportunities and you inevitably just write them off and so many times that has been my experience which caused a disconnect in the vision of myself and how I saw myself like if all these people have kind of like just dissed me or distanced themselves from me ghosted me something must be wrong with me I must be a terrible friend I must be a terrible person but in coming back to myself I realized that I'm not as bad as people may think I am I'm just a reflection of them so if they think this way about me it's like obviously you're you're the devil to yourself I'm just animating the thing because that's what shadow workers do. That's what shapeshifters do as well. So I'm not a terrible person. One thing about it, I'm always firm in my delivery because I mean, if you know me, you know, I look 12. (laughs) My husband laughed and said two the other day, but literally like I look 12. So people automatically approach me and try to little sis me. And while that might be cool to them, it's not cool to me. I'm still having to set boundaries with people that I love because they can't seem to respect my position of woman, my position of wife, my position as mother, my position as all these other things. You know, they can't respect that about me because they are having a difficult time processing who I have become, you know, and it's not, um, I don't think it's anything for me to take personally, like, oh, like, it's not that it's again, it's just a thing about themselves. And more importantly, uh, they've kind of like perceived this, they create a, a story. That's what it's called. You create the stories about yourself. You create the stories about other people. And then you kind of just live out your life based on the stories that you told yourself about anything and so again while I can't take it personally I equally do take it personally because I'm like of all the shit that I've ever done of all the things that I will continue to do all the ways in which I might not have changed physically (laughs) but you can hear the wisdom in my tone you know and just coming from the space that i I'm genuinely coming from like the inability to f- even feel me even if you can't see me like I don't know I check out I don't want to be involved but I'm really a work in progress I'm doing my best and um, I just want to really harmonize everything around me like really harmonize my well-being you know in all eight 
realms and dimensions <laughs> of well-being. So I really appreciate you all for listening to me always and I truly look forward to putting out more podcast episodes. I intend for them to be as real and raw as possible as always and really just like spontaneous. Whenever I feel that spark, I want to, you know, do it how I always did it, flip it how I always flipped it. And I think now you will get the best of me because I see what I see now and I attribute that to (laughs) the journey to motherhood honey that's such an awakening that we don't talk about but my goal is to talk about that as well talk about many different things no specific thing but many different things I don't want to say I'm going to talk about this going to talk about that because I mean if it's spontaneous if it's when I feel the spark if it's divine then you know it's no set time it's just that it's just divine so all said thank you all for listening to me I'm looking forward to continuing on this journey in such a divine way and until next time peace